Leaving My Homeland, A Refugee's Journey from Ukraine, written by Ellen Roger. Leaving My Homeland. Leaving Ukraine. Where would you go if fighting broke out in your country? How would you know who to trust to keep you safe? Ukraine is a country in Eastern Europe. Since 2014, the Eastern part of the country has been a battleground. Ukrainian government troops are fighting forces that support its neighbor, Russia. Miron's story, too dangerous to stay. My father's cousin was kidnapped by militia that supports the Ukrainian government. He was accused of being a separatist. A separatist is someone who wants Dontes to leave Ukraine. They beat him and demanded money from his family. His family was lucky they had some money to pay and he was allowed to go home. After that, my father wanted us to leave. My parents weren't working and we had little money and food. He arranged for us to travel to my mother's sister in Dnipro. In Dnipro. But only my mother, my sister and I would go. Papa was too sick to travel. And besides, my father thought he would not be allowed to leave. He stayed home to care for Papa and Sita. We did not want to leave, but my father said it was okay and he would join us later. He said we would be safe in Dnipro. He said we would be safe in Dnipro. We would have family to help. We could go to school again and sleep at night because there would be no bombing. I felt that he was lying and Natasia thought so too. When I said goodbye to Papa, Tata, when I said goodbye to Baba and Tata, Tata gave me her cross. Baba said that if Natasia and I worked together, the burden would not be as heavy. I think she meant she wanted us to be good and help our mother. It hurt to leave, but it was too dangerous to stay. As we look at some of the pictures, we can see that government supporting militias kidnapped, beat, or killed anyone they thought who was a separatist. Homes were destroyed with when grenades, another type of bomb, exploded inside of them. Many Ukrainian refugees left their homes. They traveled to cities such as they traveled to cities such as Dnipro, where they felt safer. Right now, people are traveling to places like Poland and right now in the 2022 conflict, Ukrainian refugees are trying to their best to get out of Russia. Right now in 2022, Ukrainian refugees are trying their best to get to safe places like Poland or other places to the West. Here is something you should know. The UN Rights of the Child says children have a right to live with their parents. Many of the refugees are children traveling with their parents to safer places. Battles and ceasefires. There have been many ceasefires in the war in Ukraine. Ceasefires happen when the two sides agree to stop fighting. They often last for just a short time. Sometimes ceasefires allow the sides to work on a peaceful solution to war. During ceasefires, people can leave their homes without fearing they will be harmed. This allows them to get food, water, and medical help or to flee to other areas. There was supposed to be a ceasefire in Ukraine yesterday, but Russia did not honor the ceasefire agreement and some people were killed. About 800,000 people live near the lines of fighting in Ukraine. The fighting breaks up families. A family member may even be killed. Some family members leave, while others cannot or do not leave. The poor are less likely to leave. People who are poor are less likely to leave Ukraine or move to a different place because they don't have any money to travel. They also may not have anywhere to go. As of, 26, as of 2017, there are 2.6 million Ukrainian refugees worldwide. There will be many more refugees.
from Ukraine as a result of this war. Miron's Story, A City of Refuge When we got to my aunt's apartment, it was dark. I was tired, even though the drive to Dnipro was only 55 miles. Dnipro is a big city, even bigger than Dontesk. Compared to home, the quiet was unbelievable. There was no bombing, no gunfire, and no tanks in the street. I did not miss the war, but I did miss home. We tried to call my father many times, but we could not get an answer. There were eight of us in my aunt's apartment. My aunt and uncle shared their bedroom with my cousins, Helenia and Julia. My mother, Natasia, and I shared the other bedroom with my cousin, Maxine. We were safe but I was still scared. I hid it from my mother though. Only Natasia could tell. When I had bad dreams, she gathered close to me and told me things would be good one day. My mother thought she could get a good job in Dnipro. The city had many factories. There was even a rocket factory that employed engineers, but the rocket factory was already not paying its workers. Many people had no jobs. My mother took cleaning jobs for money. We also started school with my cousins, and I liked it. Plus, my uncle and Maxine took me to the FC Dnipro match. It reminded me of going to matches with my father. I miss him so much. We finally heard from my father. He said the fighting was very bad. He wanted to leave, but Papa was too sick. She had no medicine, and she could not walk. He told my mother that if work did not improve for her, we should go to Kiev. There, we could live with my other aunt. Ukraine is among the top 10 countries in the world for people who have been internally displaced. 60,000 Russian troops are in Ukraine or along the Russian-Ukrainian border. There are probably more than that today. 27,000 Ukrainian fighters have been killed. 10,000 Ukrainian fighters have been wounded. As I said, there's been a war that started just two weeks ago, so these numbers will probably rise. Where to flee? It's not easy for Ukrainians to find safety and a place to stay. Often in the Donetsk and Luhansk regions, people cannot move around freely. The militias and Ukrainian army control where people can go. Fighting makes leaving too dangerous for many. Landmines are used on roads to harm enemy troops, but they also kill and injure ordinary people. Militia groups and the Ukrainian military often use houses as bases for fighting. Hundreds of people are missing. Some of them are held by militias. Human rights groups have been Human rights groups have said people have been beaten and killed by militias. Human rights groups have said people have been beaten and killed by militias. Most of the people who flee the fighting go to safer areas of their own country. IDPs can register with the government. They can apply for help moving for help with moving and housing. Those Ukrainians who have those Ukrainians who have fled to neighboring countries have mostly gone to Russia. They are mostly ethnic Russians. Russia gives refugees the same rights as the citizens. However, becoming a legal refugee and being allowed to stay in Russia is a long and complicated process. Like I said, many of the people who are refugees as a result of the war that started two weeks ago are not going to Russia. That is because Russia is the country that's trying to take over Ukraine. The UN Rights of the Child you as a child have the right to be protected from being hurt in body or mind. Miron's story, building a new life. We got sad news, Papa died. My father had her, my father had to make her grave in our backyard in Dontesk. He could not take her to the cemetery. All the grave diggers have left. My father and Tata are leaving too. They are coming to live with us soon. We do not want to live in Dnipro anymore. 
We now live in the capital city of Kiev with my aunt Olena and little cousin, Niura. My mother found a job there, but it was not like her work before the war. Natasia and I worked Niura Natasia and I walked Miura to her school on the way to our school. Miura's school is painted in bright colors. I think I like my school in Dnipro better. I wish we could have stayed there. Our new school in Kiev. At our new school in Kiev, the kids make fun of my accent. The Ukrainian language is different from Russian. I pretend that I do not speak Russian at all because I don't want to get into any fights. Natasia says we will have a funeral. Natasia says we will have a funeral for Papa when Father comes to live with us. I do not know if we can ever go back home. Even my football team, FC Shankar Dontesk, has left the city. The team now plays for the city of Kharkiv, where it is safer. I am happy my family is safe, but I wish things could be. A but I wish things could have been different. Challenges refugees face. Imagine losing everything and having to move to a new city or country. You have no books, toys, or perhaps nothing more than a bag of clothing. That is the reality for IDPs and refugees. Often they must rebuild their lives from almost nothing. IDPs in Ukraine may face poverty and prejudice. Prejudice is when people are treated badly because of their race, religion, or other unfair reasons. When people leave their homes to save their lives, they also leave behind their jobs, schools, and friends. Without a job, they can't pay for food or housing. It's not easy to get a job in a new city. There are often few jobs available in host cities or the places where IDPs live. In those places, some people think IDPs make the problems worse. The Ukrainian government provides some money for IDPs who do not have jobs, but it's not much. Children can go to school where they are taught in the Ukrainian language. Ukrainian refugees in Russia are also supported by the government until they can get jobs. Children can also go to Russian-only language schools. There are Ukrainian refugees in countries that border Ukraine, but Ukrainian refugees are often not accepted in other areas of the world. Thankfully, that is changing. Many countries in the world have opened up their borders to refugees in Ukraine due to the war that started two weeks ago. Thank you so much to all of the countries that are supporting Ukrainian refugees. Many IDPs and refugees feel afraid even when they are safe. Children may have nightmares or difficulty concentrating. The war may be in the past, but it still plays a part in their lives. Here is one of the UN rights of the child. You have a right to protect your own culture, language, and religion. Did you know that you can help? There are many things you can do to help newcomers and refugees in your community and elsewhere. Here are just a few ideas. Go to a library and take out books on a country such as Ukraine where there is conflict. Learn about the people there and you can help educate others to prevent fear and hatred. Offer help to refugees in your community. You can volunteer with an organization that assists refugees. You can invite a newcomer at school to your home for dinner or accept an invitation to their home. Another thing you can do is to practice English with someone who is a refugee. You can ask an adult, you can ask an adult to help you organize a fundraiser. It could be a lemonade stand or a used book or toy sale. Donate the money you earn to groups that help I Donate the money you earn to a group that helps IDPs and refugees. Lastly, one idea is that you could take part in World Refugee Day. It happens on June 20th every year. As a reminder, as a child, you have the right to food, clothing, and a safe place to live. Everyone deserves a chance to live a peaceful and safe life. Here is the glossary. It tells you the definitions of words that you might not have known while reading the book. Take a moment to read over the glossary to learn something or to remind yourself of the words. If you want to learn more, 
check out these books from the book list. You can also go to several websites to learn more about Ukraine. The end.